Welcome to the Revenge Story Times channel. I think most stories start from the very beginning, but here I believe everything can be better explained if we start from the end. So, here I am at a waffle cafe at 3.30 p.m. The girls two tables behind me were once again complaining about their boss, while three girls right in front of me were trying to stuff themselves with toast, and the waitress, Hardy, had just refilled my glass. Then, a shadow fell over me. Well, Max, my voice was filled with sarcasm, I was wondering when you'd show up. Max was Maxwell K., my former father-in-law. Uh, Chris, could we talk? Damn, I've known this man for over seven years, and for the first time, he seemed pleasant to me because I saw someone different, a person who wasn't super confident and always in control. I had to hear and see this. Sit down, Max. You're scaring the kids. And he sat down across from me. The girls glanced at us in surprise. You see, Max had always been a powerful man in both body and mind. He owns the largest warehouse in the area and the only real freight company within a hundred miles when the local economy started to decline about 15 years ago, Max managed to stay afloat, and many people owe him their livelihoods, their homes, and damn it, their lives. Also, keep in mind the fact that he's six feet six inches, still looks like he works in the big house, and is the kind of person people don't mess with. Max sat across from me in a private booth. Damn, he looked like hell, unshaven, with dark circles under his eyes. Sleepless nights in the K's household. Poor kids. Chris, I know you're hurt, but can't you and Kelly just move past this little incident? And a little incident? I forced myself to stay quiet, though it felt like my heart was pounding so hard it might burst out of my chest. My hands were sweating, and I fought the urge to strangle the man sitting across from me. It took me a few seconds to calm down, reminding myself that I didn't want to brawl with him. I wanted to win. Coming down, I noticed that everyone seemed to be trying hard to ignore us, but damn it, I knew they wanted to listen, they were craving the dirt. Well, why not give it to them? Alright, Max, which part of this incident do you want me to forget? I asked, without raising my voice but not bothering to whisper either. It was just one time, wrong, Max. This went on for years, and you know it. She never did this before, she never cheated. Come on, Max, she's been screwing me over for years. You want to hear the whole truth? Fine. I took my biscuit when I first met her and tried to get her number. She made a point of showing off every guy who wanted to sleep with her, and even those who already had. Why, Max? Why did she do that? She was trying to push you away, Chris, but you won her over. Nope, I interrupted him as I spread apple jam on my toast. She was trying to see if I was willing to fight for her, and like an idiot, I did. I gave her the attention she craved. I took a bite of the biscuit and continued, then she brought me home to introduce me to her dad, and even then, you hated me. You hated my politics, hated my career, hated my style, and all that. At first, I thought it was just the grumbling of an overprotective dad, but no, you simply didn't like me. I was never good enough for your precious little girl. I took another bite, the jam was good. Max's jaw clenched and unclenched, but the words couldn't come out of his mouth. We both knew I was right, and he couldn't argue with it, but I wanted to live with it. I needed to prove to you that I was a good guy, but I couldn't manage it. Don't argue with dad, just accept what he says. Don't say or do anything. Oh, we had a few royal battles over that, and after all that, I would just sit there and let you insult me. Tell me, was there ever a time I humiliated you in front of all your friends, sitting there, arguing with you about everything and winning? No, you can't remember anything like that. Damn it, I didn't care, I just wanted us to stay together. Are you interested in what she tried to do? Do you see how much I submitted? I took a large sip of my drink, giving me a chance to observe Max closely. He didn't expect this. He wanted me to be hurt and torn, then he could approach me, pleading and weeping in his humility to save my marriage. Yes, just like that. Do you know what happened then? She started hanging around with her old friends again, telling me they were just friends. 
I raised my hand to stop Max from rushing to her defense. I know she wasn't cheating back then, believe me, after I beat up poor little Thomas for grabbing her, but at that bar, they all came to me and assured me nothing happened. She just. Well, this was all about testing me again. She wanted to know if I was jealous of her, would I react if she met up with her old lovers, guys she had slept with in her own bed, in her own home. Well, yeah, after that, we broke up. The best three months of my life, honestly. I finished my cookie and brushed off my hands. Max was silent, I didn't know if he was finally realizing she wasn't as innocent as he thought, or maybe he knew, and this was just my attitude. But hey, either way, it worked. He wasn't talking. Well, my stupid self let her convince me to come back. That was around the time she stopped coming home so late. She did it to spend more time with me, and everything was good, really good. Then I messed up by proposing to her. I don't know why I did it, I won that damned ring at a jeweler competition, and it didn't mean much to me, but I went through with it, and that's when the strange stuff started happening. All these genuinely hot girls suddenly began hovering around me. They'd meet me at work, the gym, while shopping, everywhere. Sure, plenty of beautiful women were fine, but it's not normal when they all start coming onto you, inviting me out to lunch, outright saying they wanted to sleep with me. Hell, even Leanne started acting that way, one time, she even locked us in a supply closet and unzipped her dress. She claimed she was naked underneath. I fought every instinct God gave me not to look at her. I told each of them that I was engaged in everything, but nothing seemed to work. So you can imagine my surprise during the wedding preparations when I saw those same women again. They were her friends, relatives, acquaintances from high school. Oh, Leanne even told me she was sorry, but they just had to make sure I wasn't some jerk who'd cheat on poor little Kelly. So, do you think I passed the test? Then on the wedding day, I had another test when you made me sign that prenuptial agreement. If I ever cheated on your Kelly, I'd get nothing. Notice, though, there was no mention of what would happen if she cheated on me. I asked you what would happen if she did, if I could be free, and understood that was a bit of foreshadowing, wasn't it, Max? Oh, and you had your lawyer add a clause, if your girl cheated on me, I'd get $122,000 in my bank account, keep my clothes, my car, and the little house I inherited from my grandparents. That I leaned toward Max. But I signed it, Max, remember? I was able to sign it. And then what the hell happened last Saturday? First, I get called into work for 8 damn hours because someone decided they'd rather go to that damn amusement park than show up for work. It made my day hell, but that was just the beginning, right, Max? Then I come home after work, I can't park my car in the driveway, I'm forced to park on the street. Why? Because someone took my spot. I thought a lot about that. Well, yeah, but not like this. I figured one of the damn neighbors parked there and Kelly just never told them to move. So I come inside and see Kelly's car in the driveway, but where was Kelly herself? Kelly. I called out. I'm home, in the bedroom. Like a lamb, I went up there to ask about the car, but I wasn't prepared for what I saw when I entered the room. Kelly and this guy together, in bed, in our bed, in my bed. They were having sex in our house. I was stunned for a moment. Then I yelled, what is going on? Stupid, right? I mean, my wife was cheating on me, but at that moment, I wasn't thinking straight. Oh, darling, I love you, but I need more than what you're giving me. Don't worry, I'll still sleep with you, this is just sex, it has nothing to do with you. She, she damn it, she actually said that. So, this bastard is fine, taking my, my wife, and she starts moaning there and all that while my blood is boiling. But she went even further. Darling, could you bring us something to drink, please? That snapped me out of my shock. I'll tell you, you want me to bring drinks for the two of you? She was so sweet with her cuckold smiling as she ordered me. Yes, do it. Get something from your stash of beer. Damn it, you piece of trash, if you want a drink, you can get it yourself, I spat. But, you'll bring it yourself, she groaned in annoyance. Now don't talk like that, 
Shut up, idiot. You wanted this, and you'll get it, but not from me, and no lies, wasn't that what we agreed on before the wedding? The little bastard chimed in, come on, man, don't rock the boat. You'll get her four or five nights a week, and hey, you get to live in this big house with that nice piece. Just take it. Say that to me one more time, and you'll be eating through a straw for the rest of your life. I had never seen a man deflate like that before, not only in the situation but as a man. I think he was about to wet the bed. Screw you, you piece of trash. Keep this damned house. I'm out of here. I shouted. And who did I bump into in the hallway? Mike, your damn son. Quite a twisted family you've got, huh? Your daughter with that bastard in my marital bed, and Mike wandering around the house. Mike was all set to help his sister. Slow down, Chris, this isn't what you think. Get lost, what the hell are you doing here? No, forget it, I'm out. Get out of my way. I tried to walk past him, but he grabbed my arm. Now, you know I don't like Mike, so when he grabbed me, well, you know, does he feel better now? One hit, that's all it took. I swear I meant to try breaking his jaw, but I struck his throat instead. Man, if you ever get punched in the throat, you're out cold. Then I headed to my room, grabbed my camping backpack, I needed that gear, and headed to the door. Mike's feeling better now, Chris, he, well, the doctors say that. Great, but honestly, who cares? I played with my toast before continuing. Now, where was I? Oh, right. Kelly ran out of the house as I was leaving, her little robe flapping, shouting into the storm. But hey, she made her bed. Where did I go? Well, that turned out to be easy. I still had my old house, and I'd recently finished renovating it. I hadn't rented it out yet, so it was the perfect place for me to stay. On Sunday, I drove back to the house to pick up my things. No one was there, maybe they'd all gone to church, I don't know. So, I grabbed my clothes and whatever else I'd need, then headed to the Salvation Army to at least get a bed. The floor was just too hard. I heard laughter around me as I took a sip of dew, and who was waiting for me when I got back? Your precious little daughter. Well, the bed could stay in the truck as far as I cared at that point. I parked the truck and headed to the door to go inside. Chris. Chris, she shouted. She ran from her car toward me as fast as she could. Stop, please, we need to talk. I have to explain everything. Well, that's all I heard because by then I'd gone inside. She knocked on the door, rang the bell, and all that, but I wasn't going to talk to that cheater. What was there to explain? She slept with another guy in my bed, end of story. So, what did I do? Open the door and yell at her? No. Maybe I called the police? No. Slipped out the back door? No. I put on my headphones and started reading a magazine. Eventually, the cops came and ordered her to leave. It took them a while to get me to open the door, but after I noticed the light from their car, I was forced to do it. Nothing special, my house, in my name. I can be there if I want, so they sent her away. If it had been anyone else, they would have been in jail, but she's your little girl, Max nervously, Max thanked Hardy when she set a cup of coffee in front of him. He wasn't used to this. He usually controlled, told everything, he always ran the show. But this time, I was in charge and wouldn't let go of the reins. Well, on Monday, I withdrew my $12,000 from the bank account, I also cancelled all our joint credit cards, not that I ever used them, and cleaned up. I also went to Sankey and had an interview. They were looking for expansion opportunities and tried to persuade me for a while, but I didn't budge because Kelly thought it was too big a risk. Damn, when I went to them on my own, they made me a good offer. I accepted it. Then I went to work, walked into the boss's office, and said, Tom, I'm sorry to say this, but I'm leaving. Why? I thought you liked it here, the man said, genuinely concerned. Actually, I hate it. You're a good boss, man, but I didn't go to college to be a clerk. 
Look, I hate to leave you in a difficult position, but I recently caught my wife with another man, and I need to leave. Damn, is it Kelly? Well, I don't want to let you go. Is there any chance I can talk you out of this? He asked. Sorry, Tom, there's nothing you can do. Thank you for everything. So I walked out of the office, but I saw his secretary talking so innocently on the phone. You know that witch was telling someone what she accidentally overheard. Then I went to see Mrs. Hines, a good shark, right? Yeah, I know she has an assistant helping me with the divorce, but another person was waiting for me, hoping that Kelly wouldn't get the papers at work. On Tuesday, well, they kept trying to convince me to talk to her all day yesterday after the papers were served, and all day today. But I just walked away. I think your guys were keeping an eye on me and saw my car. Did you think you could fix this between Kelly and me? So, Max, what was that little incident? She was sleeping with another man in our marital bed. Let's see, Max, why did she cheat? Look, I had a choice at first. I could have left them in my bed. Well, she would have liked that, a higher sexual drive would have been satisfied. Oh, I wanted to sleep with everyone. Damn, half the pleasure is in the chase, making her want you so badly that she would pounce on you. But Kelly never liked little notes, calls at work, lunches, little gifts. A waste of time and money. Oh, I think she was getting back at me for cheating on her. No, wait, I never did that. I didn't have an affair while I was dating her or after I married her. That can't be it. Oh, she heard about the bachelor party and wanted to get back at me for that. Wait, because I spent that night talking to Stacy and Mike after their last fight. Now, why did she cheat, and how did she plan to fix everything? I tried to give her everything she needed, emotionally and physically. What if it was another test to see if I was in love with her or if I just wanted the money? She had the money, you spent to keep her edible flowers shop running. Oh, I like this. What if she wanted me to find them, get angry, and beat up the guy, or run away? Well, that explains Mike's appearance. He was there to stop me from killing that guy or to prevent me from running away, so she could tell me how happy she is with me now that she knows I really love her because if I were there for the money, I would be okay with her having fun. But here's the thing. I walked away. I didn't play that game, Max. For years, I tried to put up with your damned family and your tests, but what did I get? Trust, love, respect? No. I came home to see her sleeping with another man, so I could prove myself again. Max finally composed himself. Isn't there anything that could save your marriage? I know Kelly genuinely loves you, he almost pleaded. She loves me, Max? I'm tired, man, really. I heard someone open the door of the Waffle Cafe. I don't know what you did, Max, to raise your daughter like that, but I can't live with it anymore, and she will never change. She needs someone who can constantly show her their need for her, and I don't have that anymore. She tested me one last time. I loved her, Max, but she killed that. I hope you're all happy now. I stood up. Max didn't move as I put on my jacket. I saw Kelly standing at the counter, she must have heard my last remark. She was probably the last one to enter. She stood there as our eyes met. I saw tears in her eyes, a tremor in her chin, but I felt nothing. I pulled out a $20, placed it on the table, and walked into the night. Thank you for listening until the end. See you in the next episode of Revenge Storytimes. Goodbye.